Hey, Artem. Hi, Shana. Hi, can you hear me? I'm just testing my speaker here. I can hear you. Okay, sounds good. Okay, I think I'm set. <clears throat> Let's see, we're the only ones here so far. So um, somebody, somebody going to be presenting about those uh, Earthship Earthships? I'm not sure. Um, let's see. Because it, it seems to be a topic today, but I, I didn't know if anybody was like in charge of uh, that idea, you know. I don't know. I don't remember how they picked this topic, like how we landed on it. Um, I'm looking through the Discord right now. <laughs> Hi, Eric. Hello, Shana. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? Very nice. Very good. Awesome. Yes. We've got Gerardo here as well. Hi, Gerardo. How are you doing? I saw you. I saw you comment. I I saw that you uh, you you got my my links. I was I was rereading that that article that I sent you because it's been <clears throat> a few months since I read it, but it's a uh, it's like this very interesting way of mapping, you know, all kinds of information besides the just a picture of a geographical location. I think it's just a cram full of information of all kinds. So I think that's that's what those maps are. Definitely. Yeah, I, I it was a long article. Um, the the article uh, I read honestly like half of it. Um, and I got enough information because uh, I don't need to like know about you know walking through the yeah yeah you got the you got the idea Vatican of, you and know, like, what what yeah, it's yeah, about yeah. so <clears throat> exactly exactly the, the rest of it is just uh, you know details about the uh, um, what's her name Molly yeah the gal's life and and uh, her uh, mentor and how she's step through through her different phases and her master's program and her it's very interesting but uh, uh, the, what I, what I wanted to uh, to show you is just uh, you know how much land there is um, in you know concentrated in, in, in within one organization like that and uh, uh, I think that uh, you know her idea is like to to try to open it up and uh, uh, the good thing is that uh, you know uh, Pope Francis is already behind that type of thinking, so uh, hopefully it's a, sure. a meeting of the minds like that. Right, yeah. Oh, yes, yes. We're being recorded, I won't say yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, I'm not exactly sure. The recording is only going to be shared within the <laughs> learner community, but... Um, Hi, Winston. Hi, Winston. Oh, yes. Hi. Hello. Hi. My first Zoom meeting. Nice to meet you. Nice to oh, meet you. hey there, Winston. Your first Zoom meeting ever or just first from Latch? Oh, I mean, for, for Latch. Yeah. I, I've used Zoom I would have been really impressed if this was your first Zoom meeting <laughs> ever. <laughs> um, thanks for joining tonight. Uh, yeah. I don't know. I think a couple more Latch uh co-op members are supposed to join but we don't have to wait for them we can get started on the conversation around earthships um i don't have anything to present necessarily but i um there were a couple questions that we dropped into the chat to like try to answer for each other i guess um or we could start with if you're interested in earth homes and if you've looked into it at all um and if this or if this is like the first conversation you're having about earth ships it'll probably be a good 
thing to start with in terms of we all just met each other in person, which is awesome. Um, but we can go around and just say kind of like where we're at with Earth ships at this point, since that's the topic for this um, TTT tonight. Uh, and then we can go from there. So Gerardo, do you want to get us started? Oh, no, I lost his audio. You guys can't hear him? No, no. Can you hear us, Gerardo? I can do something about it. Oh, I, I, I can hear you yeah. now. Okay. I don't, know, I don't know what it was. I, I just, but I brought the mic a little closer. So. Okay, cool. That works. So is, is that okay or not mm -hmm. as okay as it could be? Nope, uh, it's good. a little faint, but it's good we can hear you. Oh, okay, I'll try to speak a little louder. <clears throat> so anyway, um, it's uh, interesting to me. I, I have done quite a bit of ceramics. I've done uh, also some uh, um, um, ceramic construction, like uh, buildings, uh, some of them quite big. And so I have some experience from that point of view. Also from the point of view that uh, um, my family in Northern Mexico, they basically, I guess, still live in adobe houses, uh, some of them. Uh, so it's, it's something that uh, you know. I I, li I I've lived in kind of modern adobe houses and um, at the ranch because uh, I've, I've been in like cattle ranches uh, far away from towns. So uh, people are still you know using adobe uh, in in the old-fashioned way. You know, so it's a uh, it's a combination of of, of things. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I'll tell you more later. Yeah, no, that's awesome and interesting that you got to live in adobe houses. And um, I'm not sure if Earthship is like a specific type of adobe house or if it is like an umbrella term. Um, my level of knowledge when it comes to Earthships is I've seen some photos, but I haven't done any extensive research on it yet. It seems like an interesting concept. Um, but I'm hoping to learn from anyone who has a deeper understanding of like how to like actually build one or I, like the difference between Adobe and Earthship, if there is a difference, I don't know. Um, but Mercedes just joined. Mercedes, we're just going around and sharing what our current uh, experience or knowledge of Earthships is, like where we're at in terms of this conversation tonight. Okay. Great. Do you want to go next? Sure. I can go next. Hold on. <laughs> Sorry. Right. Go for a little bit. Let me see. Hold on. I get my video together. Um, I I love Earth ships. Honestly, I don't I've never made one, um, but I've been super interested in them for a while. Uh, how I got into that topic was through my visit to Cal Earth with the Adobe, the Super Adobe uh, homes there that Kalili has. And it kind of just got me, got the ball rolling, like, oh, there's an alternative, you know, housing model. And it just kind of like spiraled from there. What I like about Earthships um, is that they're completely off grid. 100% um, uh, self-sustaining. So to me, I mean, you know, because I'm always interested in how to live more sustainably, how to live with nature. Like I just always been really fascinated on how to get back to a kind of like as natural as we can since we're like way, we're way in the future, but you know what I mean? Like kind of getting back to that normalizing living with nature and the cycles and you know, how they kind of ebb and flow when we feed off of each other and we kind of just, you know, it's like, you know, there's a cycle to it. And, and I think Earthships mimic kind of like a little ecosystem that, um, you know, is artificial, but it's like kind of what would be, what you would think it would be if you were living with nature in, in you know, in a, in a natural habitat type of situation. Mm, so that's cool. I, I really, uh, I really like them. I follow a couple of yeah, um, you know, obviously, Mike Reynolds being the, the kind of founder guy, you know, in biotecture, you know, Earthship's biotecture in New Mexico. But there's also, um, 
you know, spinoffs, you know, people who've taken their classes. Like there's this one Russian guy who lived in South Africa that I really like because he's taking the Earthship model, which is for a desert climate and kind of taking everything that he's learned and now making earth ships for cold weather, Siberian weather. So I just, I find it completely fascinating. And I love the idea that, that we could do something like that and be, you know, in, in a remote situation, but completely secure in our environment. So I just, I'm, I'm really kind of like happy about the topic. i just nerd out with anybody who wants to talk about it. Yeah, that's awesome. Thanks for coming tonight. Uh, I definitely have questions, but let's get through everybody's intro. Winston, would you like to share? Um, sure. I, I have no experience with Earth ships. I, I don't really know what they are. <laughs> um, I don't think I've heard of that term before, mm -hmm. but, you know, I just wanted to join the tiny topic today and just um, chill out and hang out with some people and uh, awesome. learn about this thing. So, Sweet. Yeah. Welcome. Eric? Hi there. Um, yes, I am in the same camp. Uh, this is the first time that I've ever heard the term even Earthship. Um, so uh, with Mercedes uh, little uh, posts on Discord, I'm super excited that she's here and I am ready to learn as much as others are willing to share. Nice. Well, maybe a good start since Mercedes is the only one who's really looked into Earth ships is to go to the website and I can just screen share really quick. Um, yeah. Mercedes, can you kind of guide us as far as like, is there a good- Yeah, go to architecture. Option? If you scroll down, there should be a, like on my mobile device, it, there's, a, there's a part where it says architecture. And that'll help you to kind of get into because it earth ships is almost like, you know, like a lifestyle, you know, so it goes into spirit. Some people take it as a spiritual thing, like it can get way out there. There's sacred geometry involved and all of that kind of stuff. But um, basically, you know, there it should be if you scroll down, might say architecture, meals or images, you can always just show. So there, it's using um, tires as the main, like one of the main uh, building materials, an average size um, uh, house will take about seven to 900 used tires, some up to 1400 used tires. That's to create the packed earth wall that is basically supporting the structure, the berm, which is a big mountain of dirt behind the house, which is used kind of like as a cooling, passive, you know, mass, thermal mass thing where it puts off, it absorbs the heat and then, you know, kind of levels it off. Like it protects you from the super heat, but it also, you know, in the winter time gives you uh, a, the enough heat that you're not freezing inside of it. So it's like this bio thermal mass thing that they do. They use passive solars with that design, as you can see in the back, that's called the burn, that back area. And the underneath that, will be like hundreds and hundreds of tires with packed earth. Yeah, so you gotta like seriously pack it down almost to like concrete consistency. And it's a lot of manpower to do it. Um, and then there the dirt comes over it and underneath the house, there are these giant tubes that come out the back of the berm that help with airflow. So there's like a constant uh, airflow and those tubes use the, the 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 constant 55 degree temperature of the earth to keep the regulation inside of the house while the front of the house is using the solar from the glass to kind of have like a greenhouse effect and you can have a garden year-round garden in there it's it's a crazy design um, wow <laughs> i know so um i can kind of just rattle off stuff but that's the basic gist. And then there's there, the whole system with the garden inside is, is kind of based on like they have a wetlands part, which comes out into the front of the property. And the inside of the property is kind of like a filtration system 
and it cycles water through the plant so that you're using water more times than than just flushing it down so your gray water is utilized at least several times before it goes to the wetlands in front of the property which kind of like is what would happen in a reed bed or you know a swamp area that uses that area to kind of decom decompose thing and turn it back to dust so your waste matter all of that kind of stuff goes into that but it, it gets recycled. So your gray water gets recycled, goes through your plants, your gardens, your toilet, all of that. And um, yeah, the greenhouse effect from the glass basically kind of gives you that, that uh, constant uh, temperature for you to be able to garden at all times of the year. And also with the, you know, how, the, how it heats up, but then the berm in the back is used to cool and insulate the house. So it's kind of like working in conjunction. It's kind of like this little cycle that they've got going on. And everything's packed earth. They use bottles um, as kind of like fillers. So, and pretty art, obviously. If you've seen any, you can go to any images that you might see. Um, it's, it's also to make less use of the dirt. So you're using kind of like as a spacing tool so that you're using less dirt and, but it gives it structure. So it can be a beautiful design like that, but it's also uh, structural, like it, it helps as a spacer and you're just kind of like filling it in, kind of like brick and mortar. Think of it like brick and mortar. Um, what else do I know? <laughs> <laughs> that is amazing. I mean, like everything you've said so far, is just sounds like so, I mean, like if it works, that's amazing. You know? Oh no, it works a hundred percent. It, it this these things i mean this the the mike reynolds has been doing this for over 40 plus years new uh you know university of wisconsin and new mexico they've done countless studies on you know earth ships and that's why they're popping up all over the world in different climates because um it's just you know when you're in a remote situation it's just it's such a um benefit to be in a situation where you can still sustain life there and and still be very remote plus they're just beautiful artwork and each you know person's earthship is completely unique like not not one will ever be the same there's nothing cookie cutter about these so it's very unique but the basic design will pretty much always be the same as far as there you see the hallway so that's where your indoor garden and that underneath there is waste pipes. So it drains into this bed. So anything coming from the house, like gray water, goes into these beds in the front and they water that. And you can have like grease traps and things like that. You try to use biodegradable soaps and nothing harsh detergent because it's going into your plant beds. And so it's a lifestyle. It really is a sustainable mind frame you have to be in when living you know you're not just going to be flushing things down like medicines and things like that down your toilet like you would in a city sewage kind of a thing where you just kind of you know out of sight out of mind this is a living system so it really is you have to be very mindful you know mm -hmm. what i mean um yeah. it, it grows everything you need year round um in that indoor garden on the other end, you you know you have your living quarters, and um, the concrete floor is cooled. Uh, the, everything like the furniture generally they use sometimes the actual earth to make like these little benches, and inside of them will have uh, kind of air tubes with a gr grate like a um, kind of like a screen thing to keep critters out. But it's it's kind of like your low tech air conditioner always keeping that constant 55 degree temperature coming in. And so we really um, are very comfortable in, in those spaces and they don't even have to have uh, any electricity. I mean, obviously you can if you have solar and you wire it in, um, but they, they, make, they tend to make use of natural light in these designs and make a lot of windows and openings so that as much natural light is getting in as possible. So you know, it's kind of like a, a your choice, like how you want to, um, how luxurious you want your house to be. They can be as cheap, you know, as uh, I want to say, these things are huge. They can be as cheap as what, maybe 50K, 100K and, or as expensive as 
million dollars. Um, it just, you know, whatever bells and whistles you want, that's how it goes. Um, they've got air vents on the top, like these, uh, uh, what are these called? Um, I don't know what they're called. The hatches where you can up close them with a rope or thing and they just, they're on uh, hydraulics. And so there's so many ways to cool and heat the area without any tech. Um, like, you know, meaning electricity uh, from power grids. I'm going to shut up and let someone else ask a question. <laughs> no, I mean, like, thank you so much for bringing all of this knowledge to the group because, like, I'm taking, you know, I've been clicking through these images and they look amazing, but also, like, it's hard to get a sense for scale. I oh, guess these, there's a car please. here. So, like, yeah. They're huge. <laughs> they're huge. They're not, they're like, I looked at some smaller. My favorite one is if you can look it up, it's the Adelaide. A guy took Mike, uh, Mike Reynolds course and he went to Australia, to the Adelaide in Australia and got it approved by the government to utilize it. You see that? That's my favorite. That's the smallest earth ship that I've ever seen, but it's gorgeous. And I mean, I love the little thing. <laughs> it, Let me see it, if I can find a better picture yeah. of it. Yeah. That's, oh, yeah. Wow. That's the smallest I've seen them. They're usually very massive and they can house many people. It depends on how many rooms. This one is like a studio uh, type of a situation. So that's why I said it's the smallest I've ever seen because it's like a one room living quarters. Mm. And that wall is all earthen. If they just, they use like a terracotta plaster, like a, um, you know what I mean, natural, and they seal it with oils, like linseed oils and things like that. So there's like, it's, it's, it's sustainable. That's a hallway bedroom. It's cute. It's, I love this Adelaide one. It's so cute. And that's pretty much what I want to build that size. When I say I want a tiny house earth ship. And I was like, you know, if I get a piece of property ever, I'm going to do a tiny house on wheels. I'm going to do an earth ship and a dome studio. <laughs> All three? All three, because yeah. obviously I'd utilize them for income. You know what I mean? Airbnb, all of that stuff. But just, I'm so infatuated with the Earthship and its off-grid nature. I love the Super Adobe Dome homes because the structure, um, the round structures are so strong. They can kind of last the test. You know, they're, they're pretty, they, um, the shape of them are so strong that rounded shape that they can withstand earthquake like seismic activity and Khalili did so much research on that and I know NASA had invited him to do one of their programs to design a colony on the moon because of that type of structure so I'm just fascinated by all three and I don't want to limit myself to just living in experiencing one you know I want to experience them all so yeah. that's Made. it's the smallest one that you'll find but they can be massive that's cool yeah i was um, sure like if someone was like you want this earth ship i'd be like heck yeah but like the thought of building one i was yeah not, so know, that's like, the con yeah. that's the con because this is supreme man hours right here that what he's doing right there is packing that those tires and it's just like what you would do with brick and mortar but literally you have to brute force dirt to the consistency of concrete like you got to pound it so that it's so like no water can penetrate it um and then they're going to be covered with the the earth you know to create this berm in the back so it's very laborious and a diy project could probably take you two years yeah to build um you know there are some people like the guy I was telling you about, Alasha um, from Russia. You can pull up his site. He is BioVeda, V-E-D-A, BioVeda, try that. So he's designing off-grid in cold weather. And him and his wife are doing this on their own. So it can be done. It's just going to take a hell of a long time. I mean, you can press play and see something if you want, but that's going to be cold weather climate in Siberian weather. Let me make wow. sure I'm sharing um, the audio from my computer as well. Hold on. Okay. 
Wait, this video is 14 minutes. So at any point. I mean, we could just, you can zoom forward and try to see. I mean, he hasn't built one yet. It's him mostly talking about the tech. He's built other things in South Africa where he's built a whole home. Let me see if, if they show it. Keep scrolling through. I'm going to try to see if I see anything on there. Because he does so much. Uh, I'm trying to see his, his South Africa thing. Okay, exit out of that video and go back to his main menu because I wanted to show you some of the things that he, there, you see that little, that biodome, that that pink looking polka dot looking thing? Oh, oh the one off to the right. In the video, did you see it? Uh -huh. You have to go back into the video. Okay, click on that video over there to the very right, the pink polka dot one. Let's see. This one? Yes, that's him. He's so animated. The guy is hilarious. Let's watch a couple minutes of this. Yes. Hey, my name is Alosha Linov, and for the last 10 years, I have been attending multiple workshops around the planet on self-sustainability, permaculture, and various dome homes as well as ferro cement construction. But these workshops came at a heavy price, 1K for tuition fees and one and a half for travel, food, and accommodation. So I have compiled six workshops into one online course which I'm offering for $100. The reason that I'm doing that is so we can start rapidly building eco-villages and eco-communities all around the planet. So we can start to de-urbanize from our cities in order for us to thrive in nature, in communities, together with each other. So this is it, a hundred bucks for the most amazing six top international workshops of the planet. So what exactly are we going to learn during this intensive theoretical and practical training? We're going to start with an in-depth theory. In the first lesson, I'm going to teach you how to draw your home on graph paper. We're going to plan out the electrical, the plumbing, and you'll actually learn how to draw your home to scale on graph paper, side view and top view. We'll have a detailed lesson about designing for your climate, such as awnings, greenhouses, where to place the windows, the vents, and so on. In the next lesson, we'll look closely into bio geometry, sacred geometry, and feng shui. With this lesson, you will be able to design your home to divine proportions that truly makes you feel like you want to spend the rest of your life in your cozy home. We'll also look into feng shui, which is an ancient Chinese practice allowing the health, the wealth, and the joy to be welcomed by your home. We will then follow with tire basics and show you how to pound the tires earthship style and how to use them in our foundations. We'll also look into sandbag basics where I'll show you how to make a soil test so you can use soil from your land and combine it with a minimal amount of stabilizer such as cement or lime and how to get the best proportions so your sandbag home stays strong and solid. We'll look into is a sandbag home different than an earth ship? It is. The, it's the one that I was telling you about, a Khalili. So his is is actually super adobe. The technology that he made is kind of like a concrete earth bag method. And there's just the plain old earth bag where you just stick dirt in a sandbag, use some barbed wire, and then you kind of plaster over that. Uh, Khalili's was a little bit more uh, technical. He added another uh, stabilizer or whatever to make it kind of like almost a concrete uh, formation type of situation. So he's utilizing kind of like the best of all of these workshops and kind of giving you like the basics of all of them and how to incorporate them into, you know, creating this home that's, you know, sustainable and everything. Because to me, filling a bag sounds a lot easier than pounding a tire. <laughs> Uh, yes, and, and you can, and you can totally do the earth bag home. Uh, you'll need lots and lots of rolls of those. Um, but it, it is, you still have to use like the barbed wire. And, you know, there's a couple of um, videos that I watch on. You don't have to have the complete dome around it. You can just use the earth bag for the walls and then construct a regular rooftop. I'll, I'll 
you know, guide you to a video on that as well. But earth bag, yes but still labor intensive. Trust me on well, this one, both are very labor intensive and you need like at least 10 people, four to five would be like the minimal and 10 would be ideal to get a project done so that you're not spending like two years filling these bags. Cause you have to also pound the sandbags cause they, they still need to be compacted down so that there's no shifting. You see, yeah. so it's still it's still laborious, but it's cheap. It's economical because you're utilizing soil. You're using what, so if you live in the desert or the sand or whatever, you're utilizing what's already there. So you're not moving supplies except for, you know, some very basic ones. So it's kind of like one of those trade-offs. It's like, yeah, it's labor intensive, but it can be more economical in terms of materials. Um, it can be more, uh, you know, what is that eco-friendly, you know, in terms of not having to buy new materials that are being processed and developed and stuff like that. So it's kind of like a trade-off, <laughs> you know, you want easy and, you know, the regular kind of construction method, you know, you're going to pay out the nose and, you know, all of that stuff. But, you know, if you really do care about these other potentials, then you might want to look into that um, as an option, at, at least as far as I'm concerned. I, I think that they're great. I just don't have the manpower to get it done. Yeah. Anybody have any reactions or thoughts they want to share at this point? You know, if, I want to ask Mercedes something. Um, for the uh, all these homes, the earth ships, do they have like, do they build cisterns to trap rainwater or what's their water system yes, like? Yes, they do. So there is, there are water collection around the, uh, around the perimeter of the, um, of the earth ship. And as far as like septic, it's really, it's the wetland septic system that they create. So it's off into the front of the, the yard of the thing. And there's reeds, it's kind of like a swamp recreation. Um, and that's how it's naturally turned back into the earth. It doesn't smell like people go and visit these places. Like none of, none of the stuff that you would like think about when you think about sewage and stuff, it, it's not there because it's nature that's, you know, I don't know, like when you walk in the forest, you don't smell all the animals poop and stuff, do you? Because nature does its thing and biodegrades it and does that. So it's kind of a similar thing. And that's why uh, consciousness in in your 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 practices, you know, whether you're eco friendly, matters. Like what type of detergents you're using and stuff like that, um, because that also disturbs the pH in the organisms and things that are working with you to decompose the waste and so forth. Right. I recently watched this documentary about fungi. Fungi. Um, it's, it's called Fantastic Fungi, I think, um, <laughs> on Netflix. It's amazing what mushrooms do for that's right. nature. Um, but that's what I started thinking about when you were like talking about how, you know, the ground and the different organisms filter stuff so that it isn't just like, yeah, animal poop, human poop all over the place. I haven't read the manual um, on dealing with our own waste called human newer. Yeah. I don't know if anybody's heard of that, but yeah. that's something that I want to pick up before we ever go off grid completely. Um, because you definitely want to process that stuff um, appropriately. Any other questions or thoughts? The airships and uh... The, so much of the construction being from the hundreds of uh, tires, I was curious of like, how did they- Where did they come I, from? Yeah, where did they get all these tires from? You can, so one way to get them is going to tire shops. Tire shops have to pay a fee to have them hauled away. So they're losing money. Um, so if you offer to come and pick them up, they will usually gladly give them to you. Landfills also used to allow people, I don't know about your municipality, but generally you can go and pick them up from landfill areas. Um, also, um, 
putting an ad out saying, you know, a place to dump your old used tires, you know, and people just come and they, they need a place because it's hard to dispose of. And that's why earth ships are so great because they're utilizing this material that's basically going to sit and pollute and do its thing if it's not properly oh, yeah. utilized. And so when they're buried in this fashion, there's no off gassing that would occur when you naturally throw it in a landfill with all these other contaminants that then create chemical reactions. And therefore, you know, then you're polluting the water table and, you know, off gassing. So with Earthship, the good thing is, is that the the um, tires are now worn and most of that off gassing has already happened. And once you pack it with the earth and cover it, completely seal it, it's not coming into contact with any contaminant and it does not off gas. They have researched this at the University of Wisconsin and um, I think New Mexico, you know, because obviously that's where uh, bio um, earthship biotexture is located in New Mexico and Taos and um, you know, there's there's earth ships here in California, uh, in Baja, and a few other places like Santa Maria or something like that. One of these places, but it they can be permitted here. Um, there are companies that are building to earth ship specifications, but utilizing some of the localities' uh, requirements. You know what I mean? Like so, they utilize like let's say 80% of an earth ship's technology and all that stuff, but then they get 20% of that and do whatever the municipal says. Like if they say no, no wet, wet wetland, you know, waste treatment, you gotta have a septic or a flushing toilet, then they include that. But everything else will be the earth ship, the earth ship, um, design and utilization of the the uh, berm and the passive solar and and all of the off-grid technologies so um another uh if you go to youtube look up my little homestead earth bag building for shay i was going to say shana but <laughs> it's uh on youtube my little homestead and it's earth bag building for shay I like this particular uh, earth bag building because I like the design of the roof. Like if I was to ever do a regular roof, it would be something like what they designed in this particular video. Um, this family had a property and it's, they had a, basically bought a property with a sh uh, like a little shack uh, on the property. And they um, it was just too expensive to get the permits and stuff to kind of renovate that thing. So they decided to go the earth bag bedroom for their five kids. And they basically built a, uh, like a little village of huts for their five children. Each child gets a, a, a bedroom basically a living quarters and then the main house is where the kitchen is and all this stuff. Um, I just thought it was really a, a really nice uh, combination earth bag um, thing. But um, So I found the video that is like an hour and a half long. Oh yeah, I don't expect you. I just wanted you to look at the actual, um, the design of it. Like you can pause it and just show the, the roof or whatever. But it just to show you that it doesn't have to be the a dome structure. Like some people are just not fascinated by domes as far as the living quarter type of situation and they want like a regular roof. So it just shows you that you can still use the earth bag method and have a regular roof and, you know, kind of co combining the best of both worlds so that you, you know, you're, you're doing your part or, you know, you're being uh, ecological and sustainable, but also having the different comforts, like the girl wanted a, a regular roof so she can stargaze and all of this stuff. So it was, it's a nice design. Um, they, they also have a, um, the poor man's concrete where they utilize that, which is aircrete. And it basically utilizes a foaming agent like the basic detergent and a little bit of concrete mixture. So you're not using as much. So it's inexpensive and it basically makes it lightweight, but it's as strong as concrete. So it's like you're having these concrete slabs that are lighter than normal concrete, making it inexpensive because you're mixing it with this detergent agent that puts bubbles in the concrete. 
and but it's still as strong as concrete. So you can also build structures with aircrete, which um, I learned through this whole <laughs> rabbit hole that I went down with the, with these people. <laughs> Yeah, I'm trying to find the place in the video where you can see the house, but um, it might get to it. Yeah, towards the end, you, they'll kind of pan out a little. Okay. And you can have door, like, so they have regular door. They made, they there it is. So that's basically it. That's an earth bag home with a regular roof. They use a lot of recycled materials from Craigslist you know, different uh, materials. Those are sticks from that tree that made the railing. I mean, you know, so they're utilizing junk that would normally go into the waste, but, you know, combining it with some traditional methods, making it, and that's basically what they did. I mean, it, it, it was such a great um, idea that they had. Oh, so hers is two levels inside. It's like a, a upper level, and a sunken level. So she kind of can have a level where she sleeps. Yeah, go inside. Oh, and it's so cute inside. <laughs> huh. Yeah, and that, that's a jug right there. That window is actually a bottle that they uh. just put in the wall to make a, a, so like a big jug of water that they made a window out of. So it was just literally trash that they use and, and whatever was free on Craigslist. If it was a window, they re kind of framed it. That's a bottle. And they have a tire somewhere in there, like a tire window. Huh. Yeah. Hmm. So yeah, they've got like a loft area up there. And then, then see how the stairs go down? Yeah. And that, that's that teenager's house, basically. Her bedroom, her space. And each of their five kids got one. Um, <sighs> they put jars for storage into the construction. Yeah, so they awesome. can like yeah so it's you can do so much you know, yeah it's making me think of cob houses yeah it's i mean it's obviously the same concept just like different materials um but that's really cool yep thanks for pointing us in this direction now i'm gonna go down this rabbit hole <laughs> It's so fun. And even if you just go for the pictures and to looky loo, it's so beautiful. And just to see people's imagination, like what they can do with, you know what I mean? And, and then having it be just knowing that it's just a, like earth, you know, and, and, a, you know, some manpower, you're like, wow, you did that with bottles and tires and dirt. <laughs> Pretty inspiring. It is pretty exciting. It made me feel like, well, I didn't do that until I looked further into it. It was like, oh, I need an army. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. it's fun. I mean, you can host like workshops, which is what most people end up doing. Um, you can have biotexture come to your, you know, there's a like a hosting uh, application on their website and they tell you what what is required to host uh, uh, one of their workshops and then basically utilize the manpower to build your, your place. And they right. use it as a teaching module basically for students that are paying for their course. Yeah. And you get free labor basically, so right. options. Yeah, good model for latch camps. Yeah, hello, for real, study it. I mean, I don't know. Yeah. A little different kind of code though. Yeah. Yeah. Some, some labor intensive co builds. Mm. Dirt yeah. pounding co builds, yeah. <laughs> um, I was, I kind of, uh, when we were watching that video of the Russian guy, he, he piqued my interest when he talked about feng shui because I'm not like super familiar with feng shui, but like I, I know what I know of it is that there are like theories about you know, how to organize your living space in alignment with the earth, I think. Yes, um, and positions of where you place windows, doors, mm -hmm. all of that matters because the energy, which is the chi that flows, right? You know, energy, vibe, whatever you want to call it, it, it. It's in every, you know, you know, philosophical or, you know, theologian, you know, whatever that energy is, uh, it, it has to do with kind of like the earth, the stars rotation. So everything, and a lot of ancients built like that. I mean, look at the pyramids, like 
there's something to it and it's it's throughout history and other populations the mayans everybody builds to that kind of uh to work with nature because when you're working against it it kind of causes problems in the yeah. long run you know what i mean <laughs> so yeah. you kind of kind of have to look at it i love that's why i said it can get spiritual when i said that when I, earlier it meant that because they talk about sacred geometry and about feng shui and about alignments and things like that because in some ways you you can always rationalize like if you're atheist or you don't believe in those kind of woo -woo -woo stuff you can look at it like okay if you look at it from a pure science perspective it's like well what would be you know if you're a south-facing window and you're you you want to get less sun in the evening or whatever those things matter, and even just from a science standpoint, like if you only gonna plan and put one window in, how are you gonna get sunlight in your house if you got it in the wrong position? So right. just looking at it from that perspective, those things actually matter. Where you're positioning your doors, your windows, um, what type of airflow your house gets also matters on those positions yeah. because you can get bad airflow in houses because they're not in the right direction on what the Santa Ana's do in whatever location you're in. You know, you're not utilizing the natural occurrences to basically working with you, you know what I mean? Yeah, I was reading an article right before this about the like pros and cons of earth ships. And it was interesting, like one of the, um, cons on the list was that it could take a couple of years for the internal temperature to like regulate I guess mm -hmm. um, but I'm sure it's like super de dependent on the location and like the weather you're having because like I'm even thinking we had like the hottest summer on record up here in Washington but is that going to be the new normal or was it like an anomaly you know right so like year to year things can change with nature um but but I, it's usually yeah. cyclical i mean mm -hmm. historical facts will show you that it's generally cyclical and they do repeat themselves and so that's why when when i talk about safety and security when i talk about location i say to look at noah look at the historical and geographical area if it's a fire prone area what time of the year is that you know where can you position on the hill or away from areas that tend to burn those things actually matter Oh yeah, for a hundred percent. Yeah. Um, anyone else have any thoughts or questions? And feng shui is something. Is that something you've ever thought about or looked into? I'm curious. Much. I mean, I I've read about it. I've heard about it, but uh, I don't really understand it too well. But uh, in terms of uh, you know directions of uh, the, the the way the house is oriented, I think that's important you know, at least in, in relation to the sun, you know, when the sun comes up in the morning, where it, where it sets, uh, you know, southern exposure, all that, uh, you know, which way your roof is uh, going to be um, slanted for um, if, if you're thinking about solar panels in the future. Um, for sure. So uh, the way the, the wind flows. Um, so, uh, for example, if you have like a, a flow that, that goes like a, into the house and then up like a chimney uh, type uh, window, or actually there are some uh, like in, in those houses that we saw in, in um, at the beginning, you know, the, the earth ships, they do have like a, some openings at the top, like I think to release um, heat. So all those things are good. Um, but uh, one of the main things about the, the uh, the clay houses is that, uh, like Mercedes said, it, it, you know, it's uh, very inexpensive. I mean, the material is very inexpensive. If you um, if you live in a place where you can actually mine it, uh, you don't have to pay much for it. Uh, the the thing about it too is uh, uh, it doesn't need to be that thick. I mean, or 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 you don't need the the tires necessarily. Um, it, that's just a way of, of doing it and it, it works uh, I'm, I'm thinking of the favelas in uh, in rio you know how they they use they use that system maybe that's where the idea came from because uh, they have like hills very inclined hills very steep uh, that uh, would be eroding down if it weren't for for those tires stacked up like that so mm. they've been using 
that in in places uh, you know where they they're concerned about hills coming down um but uh, i've seen and i posted actually in the um, in our discord um uh, modern ways of do, of doing adobe uh, or clay construction which is very similar to like the forms they use for for concrete just wider because it's not concrete it's like a, going to be adobe and um, you can tamp it down with a with a mechanical tamper like with a an electric or pneumatic i guess pneumatic tamper where like uh, you're doing the tamping instead of like getting like a big a big hammer like the guy was uh, doing with the tires um you can you can have uh, you know those uh, things that, that will make it go faster and uh, and then your walls don't need to be um necessarily on a slant to hold it up it will just be like a vertical and then you can also incorporate the uh, um structures with a uh, with a uh, concrete and rebar and uh, or or wood or whatever it will take because uh, you know in, in places like uh, california you have to think about earthquakes and uh, with the, with the round structures uh, the the shape like the ones that uh, mercedes was mentioning with kalili he he basically designed a system where where the, the domes or the vaults would be held together not just by by the weight but also by a system kind of like Velcro um, with the, like every course of the of, of that the clay um, bag like a very these are very long continuous clay bags they get filled up um, I don't know if they have a, a mechanical like faster system of doing it or it, it requires a lot of uh, manpower but uh, uh, so basically yeah those uh, so in between each course there's um, there's a line or maybe two lines of uh, barbed wire, which will hold it together. Um, and uh, I, th I think that Kalili did all kinds of testing on it and, and got the uh, the, the uh, California uh, Department of uh, uh, or Building, what is it, the Building uh, um, Department to to approve it. You know, it was it was a uh, well thought out apparently I, i've never seen it in real life but i've read about it so mm -hmm. it seems like it like it works uh, you know in earthquake country um, yeah thanks for sharing these resources on the discord winston have you joined us on the discord yet no i, have, I haven't joined it yet okay do you have um, the link um i think it's if it's on the website i can get get it Right, yeah, it is. It's on the Lash Learner um, website, but we have this Discord, and I don't know if you've used Discord for other servers, but we've got a lot of different chats going on here, um, and we've got a specific chat just for Tiny Topic Tuesday. So Gerardo already dropped some of this stuff in a couple of days ago, um, and we can definitely take a closer look. Um, outside of Tiny Topic Tuesday, but I just wanted to draw our attention here to it. I know Eric's in the Discord already, but... Um, a modern, a modern um, way of doing it, uh, one of those links, I think, uh, uh, or maybe more than one uh, in, in, that, uh, in that page, um, I think was the Tiny Topic Tuesday page where, where you had that picture too. I think, mm -hmm. I, think I, I added like a... Uh, some links to there's an, there's an Austrian architect that uh, has a uh, at least one house that uh, that I've seen uh, how it's built and uh, it's uh, interesting to see how you know in in in, in a modern setting and uh, with the materials that uh, you know it's it's like a clay but it when when you're done it will be like a modern house mm -hmm. uh, so. Uh, it doesn't have to look any particular way. You can make it look like a, anything you want, basically. Right, yeah. A lot of, I mean, like any Adobe house, I've seen them in all kinds of forms. They're not always domes. Um, yeah, well, so. the domes are, um, for, for people in places like a, like Persia, uh, they made perfect sense because they had very, very few trees. So mm -hmm. so you don't, you don't need, um, even for making the um, the domes or the vaults, you don't need any any trees. You can you can just uh, make the thing out of clay. 
Oh, yeah, I didn't think of that in terms yeah, of being yeah, that yeah. rectangular structure. It is a, a really uh, very clever way of a, like starting your, your round shapes. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's been used for, I guess, uh, over, a, over a thousand years by now. Cool. Well, as you guys discover more stuff about Earthships and clay homes and all that stuff, don't hesitate to share links into the Discord chat. Um, that, that way we can all see them together. But I think unless there's other things or other questions people wanted to talk about, I mean, that's about, we're almost at the hour. So I wanted to um, see if we're ready to wrap up or if anyone else would like to share or ask questions oh tony you just joined i am so sorry i um uh, my apologies i was handling uh family uh emergencies and stuff here where i'm at so um please forgive me but i was gonna say um since uh, i have that structure on the property where i live i'm perfectly um willing to um show it to anybody that wants to come see it Oh, that's on your property. That's 10 feet from the studio that I just built. Oh, my gosh. Wow. That's cool. Yeah. So it, it yeah. is the oldest um, structure. That structure is like with, yeah, it's like 15 feet from my tiny house that I built as a tiny recording studio. Nice. And, um, so, yeah, it's what is it, in, it is intended to be because... The person that built it, um, uh, it Ulysses um, Ramirez, um, he built it as a seed, um, what do you call it? A, it's heirloom seed storage for future generations. Cool. So it's estimated to be a structure in the next 500 to 1,000 years. What? Like it'll, so, it'll last that long? Yeah, so when all those homes around there are dirt and, and rubble, that thing will still be standing. Okay. So it's a it's meant to be a seed preserve for future generations. Yeah. And so the only thing that has to be completed with it is they never completed the roof. Mm -hmm. So the roof is undone. It's a dome roof that they're going to put on. So they're going to, I'm trying to talk, they want to finish the bag earth type concept. I told them, hey, let's just put a... Um, like a Mike Reynolds type of chicken wire roof with and make the dome like that because they're very sturdy as well. But, um, but I think they have other plans. So that's the idea. It's supposed to be something that, you know, is going to be there for a really long time. And it's got the, uh, the wire, like, like um, um, Gerardo was talking about, it has the, the, like there's a center point as you see that they're using as as a, as a folk as a focal point in the middle, mm -hmm. so I'm, I'm I'm I would love to show it to anybody who wants to see it. That was built in 2008, and um, it's still completely running. So, do you, do you know if, if it's clay with cement or something else, or is it just clay? No, it's uh, clay with cement, I believe. Okay, I believe it's um a, it's a combination. It's Adobe made partially with the dirt that that's surrounding it mm. so it, there's something about that quality i'm not really up on how that works but you you're supposed to include the earth around it well, it's so, readily available. and it was it was built by cal earth so those those are the kind of the authority on on that stuff so yeah so it's the super adobe method that i was talking about exactly <laughs> that Khalili made that I said was very strong. That's why NASA had invited him to go, you know, to design the moon village because that particular technology, the super adobe is a very strong structure that can withstand time and, you know, right. size. I'll, I'll tell you what that sounds right, the yeah. NASA story, because uh, I, I, heard, I heard the NASA story way back when. Um, NASA had a, a solar condenser uh, that uh, they let Khalili play with. Basically, the idea was that, uh, uh, you know, for the moon, they, they, they were just like, you know, considering ideas to see what uh, what would work. So in this case, it would be like a, um, basically fusing uh, the, the soil in the on the moon um, in, into like a, something that could be used for building, you know, like 
Uh, Amazing. So it, it, was, it, was, it was just like, a, you know, NASA had this toy, so let, they let Kalili play with it. Yeah. So please hit me up if anybody wants to see it. I'm, I'm perfectly willing to show it to anybody. Okay. You can see in the picture just to the left of it is my, my trailer. I'll pull it back up. Right here? Or over here? Yeah, so on the, the one, the bottom picture, you can see just to the left, I have a really thick tarp covering my trailer, so oh, there's no sun. Nice. Right. Cool. So uh, hopefully I'll, in the next six months or so, I'll start my build. So, yeah. Tiny. And then I want to, I really do want to finish the roof of this tiny house, of the uh, dome house. So it's pretty cool. Yeah, that is pretty cool. We learned and how... Then, can you get those people from Calarith and go and finish the, the structure for you? Yeah, I was hoping that they would finish it. So they, they had every intention of finishing it. So it's very good. Very good. It is. And it's amazing. It's it's like it's it's like rock. Mm -hmm. It's like become petrified over time. It it there's no budging at all. I mean, it's literally like a rock. <laughs> I mean, if you could hit it with like a hammer. And you expect, oh, it'll chip off like dirt or something like like the way you see uh, what uh, um, Gerardo, you know what I'm talking about? Like, um, um, you know, there's like the earth bag structures that you see. And when I saw them demonstrated before, they, they kind of crumble if they're not painted. You know, this thing, it just looks like I mean, you could hit it with a rock. It, I mean, with a hammer and it'll feel like a rock. It's so it's not, strong. It's not, uh, stabilized, stabilized Adobe. Yeah, super Adobe, like like uh, Mercedes was saying. Tony, where do you live? Are you in California? Yeah, I live in uh, that's that place. That structure is in Sunland. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'm sorry that you had a family issue come up, Tony, but thank you for joining and showing. Because like I saw what these pictures, but I get I didn't make the connection that this was on your property <laughs> I'm where i'm at right now and i've been building so i've been yeah. doing building I, I remember the other pictures i showed on on um discord uh with the trenches the trenches are like you know 15 feet feet from that that adobe structure oh yeah in the uh the water um making progress uh yeah i did water fracking. Fracturing. exactly yeah, yeah. I did water fracturing to, to get through so that one see that's a half acre property and I've put power from the front structure all the way a half acre back. Wow. Really a huge distance. So I'm going 250 feet with the power I'm dropping. So that costs a lot of money and it's 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 like, you know, I had to really study a, and I had to hire electrician to tell me if I had all my numbers right because it would put such, such a strain on the system. And you see what I'm doing there. I'm I'm uh, I'm fracturing to get under the pavement and I, and I have to do it legal. So I, I don't want to raise any red flags. So if the house ever gets sold, it doesn't, you know, it's done right. So yeah. right. Uh, keeps me honest. So anyway, I, I'm, I miss so much you guys. Uh, I really wanted to be a part of the discussion, but um, you know. So. Life happens. Exactly. Yeah. No yeah. worries. Um, my mom, I just took her to the hospital and we had her, her lungs drained, you know, so we're every like a, every, day, every day, every day, every oh. day. So it's constant. She, yeah. Don't yeah. So to stay alive, she feels a lot better once she can breathe. She can't breathe until her lane, her, her lungs get drained of the liquid. So it's, it's a big deal, you know, yeah. anyway, I don't want to bring, take you away from topic, but yeah, thank you for uh, being so flexible. Mm -hmm. Of course. Um, well, on that note, any uh, final thoughts or last minute questions anybody want to ask? Winston, are you going to get on the Discord? Information about Earthships because uh, uh, I didn't know almost anything about it. So that was uh, informative. Nice. Yeah, it was super cool. It, it uh, helped me to look into ultra efficient. Uh, uh, home designs uh, as well, which are based off of, uh, aren't those based off of uh, Earthships, I think? Um, very, very neat. Uh, yeah. 
Drop some know. links in the Discord. I don't know, uh, ultra efficient. I don't know that I've come across that yet. Winston, are you going to join us on Discord now? Yeah, yeah, it looks it looks very interesting. Like people are sharing resources and pictures and stuff. Yeah, it's it's a nice community. Awesome. Sweet. Mercedes, thanks for uh, steering the conversation tonight and sharing so much of what you've learned. It was really helpful. Oh, thanks. I mean, you know, I just was blabbing. You know, I didn't, I shared some stuff. I mean, I'm sure when you do your own research, you'll deep dive. But it's like all in my head and it's like I can spew it all out and just nerd out on it. But it's just very fascinating. And I love it. I can watch the videos for hours and I'm just like getting all these new ideas in my head. And I'd love to finally get to work on one of these projects soon, you know, um, just because it's just fascinating. I, I, I did go for a day workshop at the Cal Earth for the Super Adobe, and that was cool. Um, but never for the Earthship. So I've been looking into <laughs> trying to get me a scholarship to Mike Reynolds' place. <laughs> yeah, that would be awesome. That would be quite an experience. Maybe you can help Collar finish Tony's seed um, container. <laughs> yeah, I passed through Mike Reynolds' place a couple times because I would do concerts in Santa Fe. And on the mm -hmm. way between the airport, between uh the airport in albuquerque and santa fe is his place so I'd, I, I would always drive through and check it out and be like Whoa, oh my god it's so cool you know the guy just like he's, he's such he's such one of us man he's such yeah. a a home nerd you know and he's like bucking the rest of culture mm. you know building knowledge so-called superior building knowledge i love it right. so make sure you check out garbage Ware if you haven't already seen it so such a great movie garbage world yeah garbage warrior that's his movie oh, oh. okay did oh, you cool. see thank you did you talk about garbage warrior no is it on oh, netflix it was on netflix it's a great movie i think they removed it but basically it's his story of how he started from the beginning, like finding different building materials and he's, he, the process of developing the idea of earth ships. It's great. Oh mm -hmm. man, it's going to inspire you. So he puts on for the first time in his career, a tie and he goes to the, to the, um, the Congress in, um, in New Mexico and, and lobbies them to try to get this permit to build, you know, these, these earth ships cause he, they wouldn't let him, you know? And it's just so cool. You just got to see this movie. This guy is one of us, totally. Nice. I'll share yeah. it in the Discord. Garbage Warrior. It's probably on YouTube. So check that out. Sweet. So cool. I'm posting this in the Tiny Topic Tuesday chat. So everybody oh. awesome. yeah thank you so much and yeah thank you mercedes you're i mean if that's if that's just spewing out information and like that was very well articulated that was yes thank you so much <laughs> all of your information wow awesome well thanks everybody for coming out tonight i mean i always love an opportunity to just chat about these kinds of things this is pretty much how tiny topic tuesdays usually work we have you know a topic that we're coming together to discuss and you can bring a little knowledge or no knowledge or all the knowledge and we're just here to share that with each other so thanks for spending time with us tonight and we'll see each other again soon hopefully all right everyone good night Bye.